Hey there, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about my new corker, the Ferrari corker. Now you might be wondering, why would I want this big corker when the big little one is what everybody uses? Well, a little history about the Ferrari. The Ferrari is Italian and uh, one of their things they boast is that it's easier to use because of the better leverage. And in this case, uh, it's set up so that you can put real champagne corks in your champagne bottles. Uh, the little red one that everybody uses I found out is Portuguese and it's very durable and it works well so I'm not going to get rid of mine just yet I think I'll probably use it for you know small batches of still wine uh, this one is adjustable so that you can use it for champagne corks or you can use it for uh, still wine now if you look this up on the internet most commonly what you'll see is a model with a little arm that drops down below the opening and it's got a, a couple of jaws and what that does is it holds the cork in place when you're using it for still wines because the hole is so much bigger that the still wine corks will just fall straight through. Uh, the reason I decided to go down this avenue is uh, primarily because I'm finding that these corks most home vintners use for sparkling wine they just don't hold the pressure for long periods of time and now that I'm aging my wine to you know my, my sparkling wines five years six years they're coming out flat and spoiled because I think it's once it goes flat it lets oxygen in because it's not a really tight seal so what's unique about this well it's obviously taller you have better leverage from the handle uh, one complaint you'll see online that I would agree with is it's maybe not as stable a base it needs some sort of a mechanism for locking it in place uh, and requires some assembly out of the box. I got this one online from uh, Northern Brewers, I believe, and it came with Italian instructions. That was hurdle number one. Uh, kudos to uh, Google Translate. It did a pretty good job translating them, but uh, there was one part of those instructions that was left off. I would contacted the company and asked for Italian instructions. They were very good about it. They sent me those, and if you want them, just send me a message and I'll I'll email those to you but it also had instructions for adjusting this lower plate this plate is the mechanism that locks the bottle stand in place when you go to work in. right if that were still adjustable then it would just push the bottle away and I did a couple of practice runs just to see how it worked and I found that the bottle was moving and in fact I broke one bottleneck because as it was coming down it was putting the cork in on an angle rather than straight in. So uh, there is an easy adjustment for that. There's a nut at the bottom of this post that just you loosen it off, drop it down, and that allows the spring to make sure that this is at an angle uh, that will lock it in place. Another thing that I found when I uh, first took it out of the box and checked it out, the, the brass jaws have been oiled. So I tried to clean that and it just isn't coming out. It gets on the outside of the cork, which I'm guessing would deposit it on the inside of the bottleneck, which would then get into your wine as you're pouring it. So that's no good. So I contacted the company and again, they were very good about it. And they said, this top plate comes off. There's four bolts. That's what I'm gonna do today. And then you just take each uh, part of the jaw out one at a time and clean it. And the reason they said one at a time is because they're different and if you don't get them in exactly the right spot in the right position it won't work so they said just take one out at a time clean it with uh, some alcohol and then put it back in and I'll, I'll run a couple of corks through it just to make sure there's nothing being deposited on the cork but uh, instead of the jaws also the little jaw piece there's a little red adjustable bracket that slides back and forward so you can adjust the size of the opening for your different size corks. For, sh for a sparkling wine cork, you want that as far back as possible so that the hole is as open as possible. So we're gonna take this apart and we're gonna clean it and uh, then we're gonna try it out. Okay, that's what it looks like inside. If you push down on the handle, oh, I see those two arms press the jaws forward. That is cool. So just in case this thing comes apart in a hurry, uh, I've numbered them 
so I know which way they go back together. Now something I've noticed is that uh, number one here is bolted to this bracket. Number four is also attached to the housing. So I got number two out by removing the spring first with a flathead screwdriver. I just sort of popped the spring up this way and it slid right out and nothing jumped, which is good. Then the spring for number three. Okay, in order to get the, uh, the bolt off number one, I had to sort of prop it open with a, a screwdriver just because that spring down here is actually counteracting that motion and it was hard to get at it otherwise. Okay, we've got them out and you can see them over there. I've cleaned them with rubbing alcohol. There was quite a bit of uh, black grease on them and you can see there's uh, there's quite a bit in there. I'm going to clean the whole thing out. Now I guess they probably did it so everything slides smoothly. That makes sense. So I'm expecting it might make a squeak or a squeal without all that grease. If it becomes too much of a nuisance or I can't operate it then I'll maybe use a food grade oil in there rather than whatever they used. I'm actually quite surprised that they would put that in there. It's nice clean. Still going to run a few corks through it just to make sure. Hopefully it still works. Okay, there's a bit of an adjustment here. Now, as you can see, we've got a bit of a gap there. Don't think we want that gap there. So that means number one has to be adjusted back a bit. So I had put it all the way into that uh, sidewall. But I am going to adjust that back just a touch. And to do that, rather than take the whole thing out, I'm just going to get a a wrench that will fit down there. That's the wrong way. There we go. Okay, so that, that's loose. Well, that holds everything nice and neat right there. So I've just basically pushed that down in. Let's see if I can tighten it now. Push that down in like that. And that makes everything lay flat so that I can put the plate back on. Just want to make sure it's straight. I think that, yeah, that has to be above the plate. Like that. And we can do it. So this is an awful lot of work. Note to Ferrari, stop using oil. This is a food grade utensil. Even grapeseed oil, which I know some guys use that to lubricate their stuff. I don't want any grapeseed oil in my wine.
All right. It isn't as easy to operate. I can feel it, whereas I couldn't feel it before. And that may get worse. We're just going to play it by ear. I think for that reason, I'll probably just use it for champagne. Here is a champagne cork. It's, you can tell it's much wider than its cousin. It's also got this chamfered top, which will give it the mushroom look. And you're going to insert it about two-thirds of the cork will go in the bottle and one-third will stay out of the bottle and that way uh, it'll give it that classic hourglass mushroom shape after sitting in there for a little while and you can tell too it's got a greater diameter and that's to overcome the pressure of the wine inside I'm using a clear bottle here so that we can have a good look at it hopefully this thing stays put that was a problem before and for that reason, I'm going to put on safety glasses. Now you can tell this is requiring much more pressure. Now, because of the part of the cork that's staying out, that's one of the reasons you need the wider opening, so that you can pull the cork out afterwards. And there you have it. We'd be ready to be bottling some champagne.